Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Learn BMX Racing. This episode is a track review of <laughs> that track right there, Stars and Stripes in Lucerne Valley. So let's start this out like we do all the track review videos by telling you exactly how to get here. The easiest way to find a local BMX track is to come to learnbmxracing.com and click on this right here, BMX Racetracks, and go to the map of United States BMX Tracks. And that will present you with this map of every single track in the country. So if we come in here and we zoom in to Southern California and Los Angeles, we can find Stars and Stripes quite easily. Let's actually click on this and we'll go full screen on the map. And Stars and Stripes is actually part of five BMX tracks that are located in the high desert of Southern California. So among our high desert tracks, we have Yucca Valley out here in Yucca Valley, California. We have Antelope Valley located in Lancaster. And then we have Hesperia BMX and Apple Valley. And right here in Lucerne Valley is Stars and Stripes BMX. So you will probably be taking one of two different highways to get here. You can see we have the 18, which runs east to west until it gets to Lucerne Valley, and then it runs kind of north to south into the mountains. And then we also have the 247, which runs north to south until it gets to Lucerne Valley. And then it runs east to west, and it heads out towards Johnson Valley. So you'll probably be on one of these two highways as you come into Lucerne Valley and come to Stars and Stripes BMX. And the intersection that you'll be coming to is right here. It's the 247 and this road, Allen Way. So if we switch to the satellite view and we zoom in a little closer, you can see the track is right here. And you can see right here is the 247. Here is Allen Way, so you would head south on Allen Way. And you can park right here in this parking lot. Or you can actually come up here, go through the gate, and there's also parking within the BMX facility itself right along this line here of the last straight. Here's another good overview of the entire track. And then you can see right along here is where all the vehicles are parking. And then here we can kind of see from a different angle looking down upon the track and all the cars are parked right along this spot. So this is an alternative to parking in the asphalt parking lot. So to give you a better idea visually of what things look like here around the track, uh, let's zoom in on a street view to the intersection that you'll be coming to. So right here, as we come in, uh, now we're looking east on the 247. And right here is the intersection of Allen Way and the 247. We kind of zoom in there. You can see the street sign. So this is the street that you'll be going down. And if we pull back out and we spin all the way around, you can see right here is the 247 heading west. All right, so this is where you'll be when you come into Stars and Stripes BMX. Let's take a ride from that intersection all the way to the start of the starting hill. So right here, we can see the 247, all the traffic going by there. And then if we look over to the right, you can actually see the Stars and Stripes sign for the BMX track right there. So we come back down this street, down Allen Way, and the street is not very long. It kind of just dead ends into a dirt road. But to the immediate left right here, you see there's two driveways that lead into this parking lot. So you can park right in here, anywhere on either side of this parking lot. And as we come up towards the end of the parking lot, you'll see the fence, which is the border 
of the BMX track. So there straight ahead you can see one of the porta potties and you can see the old Lucerne Valley BMX sign and right here we come through the main gate then we go past the sign up booth on the right hand side and we come through the next gate and this is actually inside the facility. So we're heading straight towards the start hill right now. Right there on the right hand side you can see the staging area for the larger races. And as we come up the top of the start hill, we come over to the left and you can see the starting gate right there along with the gate operator's booth to the left hand side. Now that we're at the top of the hill, we can take a lap here around the track. So. I didn't actually get set up on the gate for this, I just kind of rolled it. So, had a few other people here in the gate and waited till the gate dropped and followed down the first straight to this kind of tabletop, little flat area, then here's a double leading into the first turn. And we're coming down the second straight. And, you know, a lot of the jumps on this track are, they're really good, they're really well made they have a really nice angle to them uh, if you hit them really fast you can get some serious air but you can also have a pretty easy time staying on the ground so we're coming here around the last turn over the double over a tabletop and then down to the finish line and as you can see as soon as you cross the finish line there if you turn to the left that leads you right back up to the start hill again. This clip was shot on a much bigger race day. This is actually one of the state qualifiers. So we can take our little walking tour of the track and you can see the start hill that comes down into this first sort of step up. And then there's a little bit of flat bottom that leads us into a double and immediately after the double, we get into the first turn. So like most of the high desert tracks, it's a fairly sandy kind of track, fairly sandy texture uh, to the dirt. So I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's really cool because it's, you know, very much an old school kind of track. And uh, you know, that kid really launched over the, <laughs> launched over the double right there. And uh, this comes down into another kind of step up and sort of step down. It's kind of a weird step down because it's really kind of mellow. It's, but it go, that's what leads you into the second turn. And uh, the second turn has been holding up pretty well. When the track was first open, they were having uh, issues with that one and, you know, that dirt not holding up that great. But they've since fixed it. And then we come into the rhythm section. The rhythm section has really nice flow, really good timing. I think a lot of the jumps in this track are like that. Uh, they're just they're just really well shaped. They're well groomed. They have a nice geometry to them, so it's very easy to ride this track, and it's a lot of fun. It's a it's a good length, and I I think that that. The, the length combined with the quality of the jumps themselves makes this track really enjoyable. And then here we can see a nice big group coming through the rhythm section. And as we get down to the end of the rhythm section, that leads us into the final turn. And the final turn comes out into a double right there. And once we come out of that double, we have a little bit of flat bottom and that takes us into the tabletop which oddly enough is really the only tabletop it's the only true tabletop on the entire track and then right after that we have the very end of the track which is kind of a double into a step down or you could say it's a roller into a step down or however you want to phrase it but uh it's two jumps into a third that gets a little bit smaller and then that's it. You cross the finish line and your race is over. 
This fence on the outside of the facility is where the motos are usually posted for a large race. So it would be right to the right hand side of the LV sign. Now this sign right here is some of the rules and regulations that is set up on the entrance sign. There's a few of these signs around the facility. I imagine this is something that they'll be fixing and, and making new versions of uh, as time goes on. It's a little faded. But right here we're standing by the entrance gate and so you can see to the right hand side there we have the sign up booth directly in front. You can see some of the parking and then as we pan over to the left you can see another little area of parking plus this black kind of shack that's sitting there. That is the snack shack. So if you're looking for something to drink, you're looking for something to munch on at one of the bigger races, you'd go there to the snack shack. So here we can see the front of the sign-up booth. And as we pan over to the left, you can see the second gate that actually leads into the track. So the truck that's parked there on the right-hand side, uh, that's one of the track operator's trucks, so usually the general public doesn't park in there. Right there you can see some bleachers along the final straight, and the bleachers are just kind of mixed in amongst the parking area, so it's a place where spectators can watch the races. Now, again, right here is the outside. You can see that this stretch of fence is where the motos are posted for the larger races. Uh, it's just a lot easier uh, to have people kind of gathered out here and so that's why they were doing it in this area instead of inside the facility. So for ordinary races like local district races you can see there's the finish line and as we pan over to the left we can see there's this other fence right here along this tree line and you see these two black boards that are set up on the fence and those are the moto boards for the local races for the smaller kind of races so right here we can see a close-up of some of the moto sheets and as we zoom back and pan back over again it gives us a good idea of exactly where these moto boards are located inside the track. Here's a few shots of the observation tower and the observation tower you can tell is right next to the finish line. So it's a great spot for announcers to be kind of staked out so they can really see who wins the races and right here we have a good shot of them doing a little maintenance by the finish line and as we kind of pan over to the right, we can again see the bottom of the observation tower. So the tower is a pretty cool feature at Stars and Stripes. It's uh, not something that I've seen at a lot of other tracks. Seems like a lot of other tracks tend to use like a uh, shipping container or something like that. So I always thought this one was kind of neat because it's actually, you know, built out of wood. It's sort of a cool observation tower. Now as you come down the back end right here of the second turn, you can see again the, the observation tower, so it sort of orients you to where you're at. But if we come over to the right, you can see right here is the staging area. So you can see all 10 lanes for people to set up for their motos in a race. Now. This is a little uh, unusual, you know, at a track to have the staging area kind of separate from the start hill, but it's really the only way that it can be done because the start hill itself is so tiny here at Stars and Stripes. There's simply not enough room at the top of a start hill to organize everybody and to get everyone lined up. So having attended a large race, at Stars and Stripes. I think this actually works out really well. Everybody lines up and you have a track operator 
a volunteer in front who's calling out the motos and then everybody kind of takes their turn going up the star hill so this is another good area to observe races from if you're looking at the start hill and you kind of come over to the left there's a big open area here between the first and the second straight and a lot of people will go in there to be able to watch some races you can see right here uh, this is the start of a race with I'm not sure who all these people are I know it's Kylie and Maddie and that might be Maddox in the middle I'm not certain but um, this is just a, a fun little local race and uh, you can see that this is, is a great spot to watch the race from you get a really clear shot of the start hill and here's another view from inside that sort of infield area between the first and second straight so you can see them come off the start and you get a really nice clear shot of everybody coming down the second straight it's not the greatest place to stand if you want to see the finish line but it does work stars and stripes is one of those tracks that has actually gone through a lot of different track operators and a lot of different names when this track was first opened it was known as lucerne valley bmx later it became known as Crossroads, which was often written as just the letter X and then roads. That's why for a lot of the signage around the track, you'll see both. You'll see Lucerne Valley BMX and X roads. Now it is Stars and Stripes, and the track operators are Aaron and Dennis. And let's have a little chat with them and hear more about what this track is all about. Hey, I'm Aaron Bewin, track operator here at Stars and Stripes. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how we came across this track. Um, essentially, we, we got word that uh, Mike Metzger was going to take it over, and uh, he decided not to. And we're really looking forward to an opportunity to give more than, than two tracks to, to the high desert. We wanted to give more opportunities for kids to ride, train, and, and you know participate in the sport that they love. So when we took it over, it was... It was pretty bad. There were weeds everywhere, holes all over the track, um, needed a lot of upkeep. So we put a lot of hours into it, trying to get it to the, to the point that it is now. The point that, you know, everyone could come out, safely ride, have a good time, drama free. Um, still got a lot of improvements that we're going to be doing, which I believe Dennis is, you know, talking about that as well. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy the, the video of the track. Uh, Dennis Luceo here. I'm assistant track operator for Stars and Stripes BMX. Um, we kind of just uh, had a plan to come out here and make this track available again to the people of uh, the high desert. And it's been a process, been a journey. Um, we've learned a lot over time. Over time, um, as you can see right now, we're fixing the first uh, 30 feet of the track, trying to make it a little smoother for you guys. Um, the glue will be hopefully going down soon. Gates being built as we speak, so the future is looking good for you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys all here, Stars and Stripes BMX. My name is Casey Bewin. My dad owns Stars and Stripes BMX. Um, favorite part about the track is really the starting hill, how steep it is, and just the rhythm, how it flows, and it goes downhill, and really just like how it flows. My name's Landon Lucero, and my dad owns Stars and Stripes BMX. And one part I like about the track is that I like the rhythm, how it flows, and how it's set up. It's it should be noted that these young gentlemen are responsible for naming the track Stars and Stripes after being called Stars and Stripes during a state race by the announcer the boys said why don't we use that as the name of the track Chris Alpashan here uh, I've been riding BMX and building tracks over 35 years I'm here at Lucerne Valley Stars and Stripes and today we're fixing the starting hill here a lot of rocks like this in there getting out you know, don't want to crash on our bikes on these. And we're almost ready to pack with our cars, with my car, go up and down it. And uh, right now, it's only one improvement. We're going to try to come out and do stuff once a week out here, make it nice for everybody. But eventually, we're going to put a new starting gate. Uh, we're going to glue down the track and eventually get some lights for nighttime racing because we only have one set. And uh, just making improvements. So uh, having clinics like today, we have Richie Clinic, helping the riders and helping the track. And uh, tomorrow night we're going to have races, our Thursday night racing going on. And uh, so pretty much right now, just getting these out, making it nice, and uh, hope to see you guys out here sometime. Here we see Chris and other volunteers working on the balance bike track, or the strider bike track. 
and Chris doing a little walk around to show what the course and the layout is like. So all those really young toddlers can learn how to race BMX and learn how to ride bicycles. Something that I personally am very jealous of because yeah, I didn't learn how to ride a bike till I was six years old because we didn't have these tiny little balance bikes. So it's pretty cool to see you know, all the effort, all the work that goes into building this sort of thing. And you can really see, you know, how much blood, sweat, and tears all the volunteers put in at this sort of place. The dirt at this track is, you know, it's a lot like all of these high desert tracks in California, it's got a lot of sand kind of content to it. So it does make it pretty difficult to work with. It's not like tracks that are in middle America or on the East Coast where they have a lot more clay, a lot more density in their soil. The soil out here in these high desert tracks is uh, difficult to work with. A lot of tracks actually will bring in dirt. They'll bring in, you know, dirt from uh, landscaping companies and things like that. And there's some of the little kids on their Strider bikes getting ready to do a race. But uh, yeah, they, they have to do a lot of work to get these tracks to work properly. And here we have a few images of them uh, fixing the gate on the starting hill. This is actually just a temporary fix that they're doing. They want to do a lot more to it, but every time the gate would drop, it would kick up a lot of dirt. So they ended up putting in this layer of cement. And right here, you can see just how steep that starting gate is. It's kind of difficult to convey in video and photos uh, just how steep the starting gate is, but it's something that uh, a lot of people make comments about at this track. If I had to say anything negative about this place, it might be that. <laughs> I mean, the gate is a little bit too steep. Uh, some people really like it, but a lot of people aren't crazy about it. And here we got a nice shot of a bunch of the volunteers, including uh, Dwight Brown there on the left-hand side, who does a lot of the staging for folks. And here we can see uh, Chris packing down that very first uh, straight on the starting hill. And uh, this is after they've kind of raked it out and gotten a lot of the rocks and stones out of the dirt. And then they have to go back and, and pack it down. So a lot of work goes into maintaining the track. Chris mentioned that a gentleman named Rich was teaching a clinic the night this video was taken. Now, for those who don't know, Rich Avalanche Anderson has been racing BMX all his life and earned many national championships. Today, his daughter Danica is following in his footsteps and is a phenomenal racer in her own right. Rich and Danica have taught clinics at tracks all over Southern California, and when I first started racing two years ago, I took a couple of their classes myself. Therefore, I speak from experience when I say I highly recommend that you get some training from the Andersons. Whether you are a new rider and you just want to take one or two introductory clinics to get familiar with the sport, or you're a serious rider who wants weekly training because you have aspirations of being a professional, you can benefit from getting trained by the likes of Rich and Danica at their avalanche clinics. And if you are an old school rider who loves the movie Rad, remember, Rich Anderson actually beats Crew Jones in the qualifier main. It's not often a fictional movie hero gets beat by a real rider. For the Skyways team, it's Richie Anderson. Richie Anderson will win it, and Jones is going to hold on for second. One thing I always find interesting is measuring out the length of the track. So let's start here at the start hill, come down the first straight, come to the first turn, go through the second turn, and then we come down through the rhythm section into the third and final turn, and then the finish line is uh, right about there, I would say. So the full length of the track is approximately 822 feet. Let's take a quick look at the history of Stars and Stripes. This is 
a fairly old track. I mean, it's been around for quite a while. It's been around for eh, a good 20, 25 years or so. Um, it's not as old as some tracks in California. Some of our tracks are as much as 40 years old. But Stars and Stripes have been around for quite a while. So let's go back in time and see what else we have. So right here, uh, this image was taken in 2020, and this is still the layout of the track today in 2021. You can see here back in 2018, still look pretty much the same. Even here back in 2015, still had the same layout. Really the only thing that's a little bit different is you can see they did not have a Strider track. The Strider track is located right in this section right here. And also the staging area. Now the staging area, all the lines are perfectly straight and they're right here. And at this point, back in 2015, you can see the staging area was a little bit kind of angled, right? There was a little diagonal and then it kind of came up to the start of the starting hill. So that's really the only difference. The track itself was pretty much exactly the same. Back in 2005, the layout was quite different at that time. The starting hill, you can see, was still in the same spot, but the track then sort of just followed the fence line, came down the back, and here's a really slow kind of 45 degree turn. And then we got into our 180 degree turn here, another one here, another one here, and then that dumped us out at this spot, which is kind of pointing right towards the, the edge of the starting hill. 2003, also kind of a different layout. This beginning of the start hill is the same spot. It still kind of comes down with a 45 degree turn along the fence, but then you can see as it kind of curves through these straights, it, I, I, <laughs> this is a really weird ending because it looks to me like there's a turn here. Uh, usually don't have a turn that goes straight into a finish line, but that's kind of what it looks like it was doing back in 2003. And here we have the track in 1995. You can see there was no track there. It was just a big old empty field. So the track first came into existence somewhere between 1995 and 2003. Here is the summary of everything you need to know about where Stars and Stripes is located and when all of the racing and clinics and things are happening along with how to contact the track. And as I mentioned in all of my review videos, make sure that you check up on all of this stuff because you know this information is always changing, it's always different. So in 2021, this should be accurate, but five years from now, 10 years from now, well, this might not be correct anymore. So <laughs> always be sure that you reach out to the track and contact them before making your way out there. With a name like Stars and Stripes, this track does a flag lap before every race, where the anthem is played, every patriot stands, and the symbol of our liberty and unity is honored. As a child in my teens, I didn't understand the importance of that. I cynically misunderstood the symbolism. I thought it was more important to honor fellow human beings than to honor a bit of fabric. But as I became a little older and wiser, I realized Old Glory represents even more. The joy of our collective freedom, the value of our neighbors, the love of our families, the pride in our little towns, the bond of our friendships. This is why every true American pledges allegiance and every decent citizen of the world always respects our flag. They do so to celebrate the best of what our people are and the glory of what we still stand to become. Our flag flies for freedom, the things we believe, a shining light upon a hill. Thousands have died for the stars and the stripes Thousands more most likely will Cause freedom ain't free 
It was paid with their blood The least we can do is to stand For the men who have died And laid down their lives For people they don't even know The moms and the dads And all of the kids Whose loved ones will never come home when that anthem is played and old glory is waving, I cover my heart with my hand. And that's where I stand. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Learn BMX Racing. I want to thank Aaron and Dennis for having me out here to do the review. And I also want to thank Rich Anderson for doing his clinics and let me shoot some footage of him teaching all the kids. And remember, when you come out here and you do a race or you do a clinic with Rich, whatever you do, never forget that your good old days are happening right now. <laughs>